That's what I did last night. Watch the highlights of the Houston Bills game. I feel worse. Why would you do that? I was curious. Would you think it was going to (laughs) change? I'm hoping. What'd you learn? No, it was as bad as you remember. No, it was worse. It went went downhill. It was worse than I remember. Okay. It was a slow, painful death. See, I remember that game. Maybe I'll feel differently if I rewatch it. That game was like a cliff to me. It was like, okay, we're all right, we're all right, we're all right, we're all right. Oh, no. It was like like going off that big drop in a roller coaster. It was like, okay, let's just hold on. See, it wasn't like that for me. What it was like for me was... Remember that guy that got tied to the bed in seven? You had him there for a year? You talk about this movie a lot. Yes, I do remember the guy. That's what it felt like for me. And they went flip flipping through the pictures. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, he's healthy, he's healthy. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. No. Well, I think there's something to be said for... Because everybody's going to talk about the defense. So let, I, I, I actually, I, I would like to unpack a little bit. Is there concern on the defensive side of the football post-Houston Texans game? Because a lot of people are going to blame Josh Allen for not being able to bring the team back. But I think there's something to be said for that word back, right? Like, the Bills were losing in that game. Yeah. They, they were losing. So, is there something to be said about the defense? Is the defense not in the shape that we think it is? Is, is there concerns or red flags that maybe we're just not privy to right now? Or we're just we're just ignoring. Like, is the defense really in as good a shape as we feel? Because I can tell you, last season I was excited to be a Bills fan going into the season. There was so much excitement around it, yeah. right? Yeah. Second year Josh Allen, the defense is all coming back. Well, now I'm looking at you know going into 2020 and okay, third year of Josh Allen, the defense is coming back, but I feel different. I feel very different. Yeah. Why do I feel different about a team that made the playoffs versus a team that only won six games? Um, Although the variables, the, the team is markedly improved. Why do I not, why am I not excited about that? Why am I not at the same level of excitement as I was last time? The level of expectation that you have now. It's, it's, just, it's just the same thing as if the Bills are winning in a game. Every fan is like, are they going to yeah. hold on? Not, hey, we're going to kill this team. We're not there yet. Bills are not there yet. No. After being beaten up for 17 years, that's the attitude that anyone would have. Like, all right, they're up by 20. You know, they're going to lose it later. You know what I mean? Like, stuff like that. As far as... Blow it in the playoffs. Blow it in the playoffs. (laughs) And they did again. Another major league reference. What happened in Houston was you had, and everyone else who watched the game, had a front row seat for why the Bills lose games. Mm-hmm. You went up 16 to nothing when you should have been up 28 to nothing. All right? Good. Wait, time out, time out. Go back over that. What, what do you mean? You, you had a touchdown nothing. and three field goals when those three field goals should have been touchdowns. You should have. Okay. You should have put the game away in that, in that sense. You had the ability, because you're kicking 40 yard field goals. Mm-hmm. I mean, the one at the. Uh, you're at the 23 yard line. What are we doing? What are we doing here? Mm-hmm. Why are we not winning? We're not, we, we got close to the red zone. Now, drive stall, I understand that. You only get three. Okay. All right. So it should have at least been 24 to nothing. I mean, you did that three times, though. I know. Yeah. I'm saying good teams would have scored two out of those three with those. John Brown, toe tap. Uh, another penalty on a hold after you get a first down. You can't make it up. Uh a lot of those things, maybe being in that moment for the first time with some of these guys was, was tough. As far as the expectation, though, goes, I'm with you in that in that respect where going into this season, going into last season, you didn't have any expectations for the team. Even Vegas was predicting for them to win six games. Mm-hmm. Okay. The minute they were, what was it, five and one? Mm-hmm. You're like, whoa. Now, and it's exciting. You know, I mean, the first time you, you go through something like that, it's exciting. And then uh, they end up going nine to three, beating uh, beating uh, the 
Dallas Cowboys. And everyone was – that was the highest point of the season. At beating Dallas? Beating Dallas <clears throat> and then beating Pittsburgh to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. No, they're turning a the corner. They're turning a the corner, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you, you then go into this offseason like, okay, there was no bar last year. Now it's 10 wins. Mm-hmm. Where are you going from there? Right. Yeah, the floor is 10 wins. Yes. Yeah, that's now your floor. Unfortunately. Now, that's why I, I had a discussion with a Patriots fan, friend of mine. I go, you know what? I'm going to feel really bad for you very, very soon. He said, why? I go, because you're 30 years old. You only know yeah. winning football. Right. Going to the playoffs. We've been there. Yeah. That, yeah, we've been there. Grew up with that myself. Yeah. So the the, the problem with him is that he's going to, he's going <laughs> to, he's not going to be happy very soon. I mean, there's a greater discussion on whether that's system or whether it's not. You know, like there's a greater discussion to be had. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I'm, I'm saying, though, overall, bringing it back to the Houston game, you should have been up more. You weren't up more. That was the microcosm of the Bills season for me. I think that's fair to say, um, right? So I, I guess moving forward, what's, what's going to change about that? Because I see a lot of the same, right? I, th- this whole offense is coming back. The whole defense is coming back. So what's going to be different? Is it philosophy? Is it player? Like, is no. it talent level? Like, I don't I don't know what... I, I don't think there's one specific answer, but I think there's one easy place to start. I think you have everything in place that you need at this point for this team. No, you got talent. You do? You got, you got talent. You got ability. How many Very games, disagree. other than Philly, for me, this mm-hmm. is my perspective, other than Philly, what game were you not in a position to win? And you just didn't execute, or there was a penalty, or the guy dropped a pass, or mm-hmm. Allen overthrew it. Right. You could have beaten the, the Patriots. He mm-hmm. he throws that corner out to Knox. He mm-hmm. he catches it. That game yeah, might be over. Yeah, it's a different game. Because it wasn't the same New England that we saw. Remember when they played the Titans? They got rolled. Mm-hmm. Um. So there were I, there were plays throughout the year that I was sitting there going, you know what? Two three plays here and there, they could have been twelve and four. Two three plays here and there, they could have been eight and eight. You've heard the phrase, well, it's academic at this point. You've heard that phrase, right? Yeah. I think that in the Houston game, you want to talk about the defense, I think it was academic by the time it went to uh, overtime. I think they were just gassed. They were just so tired. Well, you have Milano miss a tackle Milano, on Watson. Milano, that's what did it. Milano, Edmonds, Hyde, and Poirier play 100% of the snaps. Mm-hmm. This is, you are, and they played 100% of the snaps the whole season. Yes. Now I understand you got to have some gas left in the tank when you get there. You know, when you get to the end of the road, you still got to have some gas left in the tank. Mm-hmm. But you're, you, this team asks a lot of those four players. On defense. The, the the main thing for me is that if you equated, if you if you said points were money, mm-hmm. okay, points are money. If you want to help this defense, you either got to have time or money. If you don't have either one of those, like they weren't holding the ball forever, no, and they weren't scoring a lot of points, right? That puts too much pressure on this defense. Yeah, you either got to score a lot or have the ball. A lot. Well, that's where the like the field goal drives didn't frustrate me at the time because you were moving the ball, right? You you were taking up first time. downs, yeah. right? But that second half, no, three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. It was awful. And the, the but that notice. was a moniker against the Bills. At the beginning of the season, well, you have to wait till the wait till the fourth quarter. You know, they they show up in the fourth quarter. Sure, they didn't make halftime adjustments all season. No, right? I didn't see many of them. Even yeah. Watson said it after the game. He said, "Listen, we know what they were going to come out in the second half because we saw what they did in the first half." And the greatest part about it, and one of the biggest secrets in the NFL, is this: if you hold the ball as an offense longer than the other team. You're not giving them chances to score on your defense, number one. Number two, to game plan for your defense. Because you can throw different wrinkles at them all the time. Mm-hmm. If your defense is on the field a lot, they start to get used to tendencies. Mm-hmm. And this is a defense that has played together for 32 straight weeks. Yeah. Like, the majority of these parts played together for 32 games straight. You're going to diagnose what they're doing. That was my uh, aggressive stroll down memory lane. Well, that's... 
that's why I guess personnel gets me a little bit, right? Because we say, oh, the Bills are fine at linebacker. They got Milano and Edmonds. No, they're not. They're no. not fine at linebacker. No. They, they need, you, need to, you need to put in different personnel packages every now and again. So a quarterback goes up, he looks, he's staring at the mic, he goes, that's not Tremaine Edmonds. Right? Remember like, what you said about Mosley? Why Mosley would have been so great here? Because you put him anywhere. Put him anywhere. Any of those three you can put anywhere. But that's what I mean is... You need I, a third guy. I think they're missing personnel. I, I think that's the differentiating factor. So when you said, you know, you, I think they have the talent, I was like, no, I disagree with you. I, I don't they're think they have the talent. They're already top five. I, I, get the, I get the results, but okay. you understand that in order to maintain this type of production, you need to continually evolve. And by just bringing the same people back all the time, I don't really think you're doing that. You need to bring in some folks who are going to bring in different personnel packages, right? Like they were rotating in their nickel linebacker, but that you shouldn't be. That's not your change in personnel package, right? That's not what I'm talking about. Because I'm talking about when you're in your standard base package, take Jermaine out on first down. Give a different look. Every once in a while. You mean put like Zoe there? Well, in the no. past. Well, in the past, I mean Zoe. Put Zoe in the middle. You could have. Right, where you put Milano on the inside, and then you you uh, I mean they had no other linebackers to really pull from. That's what I mean. though. personnel has always been my, has always been the thing that's bothered me, is that you're depending on Milano, Edmonds, Hyden Porter to play 100 percent of your snaps. I understand that they're the linchpins of your defense. Believe me, I'm not saying not to play them, mm-hmm. but I'm saying that you do need to re you need to revisit the personnel package you're putting out there because you can control the flow of an offense just by the personnel that you put out there. And if you can start mixing that up a little bit, it gives those guys breather. And also when you start, when you start to see teams mount drives on you, you have another bullet in the gun. You've you've got different personnel packages that you can go to to give different looks because Watson's absolutely right. We, we knew what they were, we knew what they were going to be. It's frustrating. That's the fault, but that's the fault of, that's the fault of McDermott not being. I don't no, put that. I, I, don't, I don't put that on beat. I don't think it's the fault of either one of them. Who's the other guy that got drafted with Jaquan? Jaquan Johnson. Who else? There's another safety, wasn't there? Or like a no. linebacker? Hybrid. No, there's a linebacker. Um, that was. Um, it wasn't Tyrell Dotson. That was a free no, agent. Tyrell Dotson was a free agent. Uh, oh God, he was. Uh, got hurt, shoulder injury. Uh, was on IR. Yeah, he went to Florida. What the hell was his name? Voshan Joseph. Voshan Joseph. Thank you. Okay. Everybody in Hashtag Nation was blowing up Voshan Joseph in our well, linebackers episode. Well, no, the point is this. You talk about the percent. They don't have the personnel to do that. That was their plan. They didn't plan for this kid to get hurt. But they didn't do anything to replace him either. Well, they, did, they, they said because it's good enough right now. It's good enough. You got Voshan Joseph and Jaquan Johnson. One didn't play at all. One played in the playoff game. That was, yeah, played in week 17. You got to think, though, those are two extra picks now for this year. Mm-hmm. Two guys on rookie deals. That's two extra draft picks you have. Yeah. So I, you, yeah, you're right. So you're right if you decide that. to put Voshan Joseph on the other side of Milano with, and then flip him? Are you kidding me? Or you want to put Joseph on one side, Edmonds on the other, and put Milano in the middle? You're like, Whoa, that's your different looks. They didn't have that ability this year. No, they didn't. They wanted to do that. Coming up in 2020, I think that's going to be their their hook. So I think they have the personnel, but it was hurt. You put another 25 pounds on Daryl Johnson, you don't have to worry about losing Shaq Lawson. Because he's like 230-something. He's 6'5", 230. Lawson's 265. So you have personnel there. You're getting Harrison Phillips back if you happen to lose Jordan Phillips. Now, keep in mind, I'm not, not the saying these guys play, are the same players. Equal. Right. I'm not saying I'm saying you have a player there that you don't have to draft or sign. So that's what makes the draft for me so interesting. I don't know where they're gonna go. Oh yeah, I have no idea. Where are they gonna fit on this roster? We talked about that last last season. We're like what? You're gonna draft a defender, where are they gonna what are they gonna play? <laughs> 